Hi everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my series of videos on introduction to functions. Now I'm going to answer the questions, what is the domain and what is the range of a function? I'm going to give an example and I'm going to talk you through it. Now this is a very elementary uh, presentation. So um, I, I'm trying to be as accessible as I can with these kinds of um, sort of calculus for beginners course, if you like. Okay, so before I give you this um, slide here, let's just remind ourselves of what a function is. A function is a bit like a rule. Um, you input something into the function, it does something, it processes that input according to the rule, and you get an output. Now, if you think of the function as a machine, you input a number, the f goes to work according to the rule, and you output an another number based on the rule. Now, the, 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 the important question that we're going to answer in this video is what kinds of inputs are okay for certain functions? And if the input's okay, then what kind of output can we expect? And you might think, well, numbers. Well, what kind of numbers can I put into a given function? And what kind of numbers will I get out of a given function? So, domain and range are important because they ensure that any work performed with the function is well defined. The inputs are all okay. We're not gonna break the function by putting in a, a, an unacceptable input. And we can also learn through the range about how the function behaves. For example, when we're drawing graphs. Okay, now, if you've looked at calculus before, you might think, well, I know what the domain and the range is. Yeah, my experience is that most people have some sort of fuzzy idea about domain and range, but they can't really put their finger on it. Okay, so let me just um, unpack this a little bit. The domain of a function gives us the set of allowable inputs, okay? So what, are, what we're sort of asking and answering there is what are the acceptable or allowed inputs All right, and the range of a function gives us a set of achieved outputs. So the, the question there that we're asking or answering is what are, uh, what outputs, I guess, what outputs do we get? All right, so that's the simplest way, in my opinion, of explaining domain and range. Now there are some basic rules or top tips, if you like, when you're doing problems. Okay, so let me just make a little note of those. So these are my top tips. So, uh, so there are probably more than this, but I'm just going to um, list two for each. So for the domain, with functions you cannot or in mathematics, you cannot divide by zero. So that's one important thing. And secondly, you can't take the square root of a negative number. I'll show you how these work in practice in, in various examples. So uh, I'll put this into context in a minute. So that's two top tips for the domain. And for the range, well, square roots can't be negative. And, I, and I'll unpack that a bit more in a minute. And the last one that I'm going to share with you is if you have a function 
where you have a constant on top and something down the bottom like uh, 1 on x squared or 1 on um, uh, x squared plus 7 or something like that, this can never be 0 because the top, the denominator, is never 0. Okay? So they're my top tips from a practical point of view when you're actually doing problems. So let's do a problem. Okay? Here is an example. Compute the domain and range of the function given by this. f of x is defined by the square root of x plus 3. Okay. So how do we do it? Well, we're going to use some of these top tips. Can we see anything? Well, let, let, let's work with the domain first. We can't divide by zero. If we look at our function, there's no division there. Can't take the square root of a negative number. Well, this, this is a function where there's a square root in it. So I think we can work with that. So by top tip two, we have the following. X plus three, can't be negative because you cannot take this because we're dealing with real numbers here so we you cannot take the square root of a negative number okay so what does this mean the thing inside the square root can't be negative that means that x plus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0 okay so now we're form we're making this more mathematical we're forming an inequality so that is x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so now what we do, we have sort of mathematically put some sort of condition on the inputs, the x values, and the condition is this, this inequality. So we solve this for x. And then that'll give us the set of allowable inputs. It will give us our domain. So let's do that. So if I, basically with this inequality, I want to make x the subject. So if I take away 3 from both sides, I'll get x is greater than negative 3. Because negative 3 and negative 3, um, this is what you'll get. All right? So, I can choose any x that is greater than or equal to negative 3 and put it into this function, and the function will make sense. Okay, so let's write that now as an interval. So on the number line, the, so let's say this is the x-axis, x greater than or equal to 3. That is these sets of points. Now, I'm colouring this dot because I've got greater than or equal to, so x could equal to be equal to 3. If this was strictly greater than, I'd have an open dot here, or open circle. Okay. Now, putting this, writing this in interval notation, and using the following notation for shorthand for domain, dom f, it's the interval from negative 3 off to positive infinity. And that's, that's pretty much where I'm going to stop with the domain. This is a set of numbers. It's an interval. I can take any x value or any value from here, put it into here, and it will make sense. It's, a, it's an allowed input. Okay. Moving on to the range. So what tips have we got for the range? S square roots can't be negative, and this sort of constant on top divided by something can't be zero. We don't have any division, but we do have a square root. Square roots can't be negative. So when we talk about this square root sign and not plus minus, we always talk about what's called the positive square root. Okay, so let me unpack that a bit more. All 
right, so let's talk about the range now. So by top tip three, square roots can't be negative, and this is a square root type function. So for every x in the domain, the output, if you like y, is always greater than or equal to zero. So now we've got another so another inequality for y. y is greater than or equal to zero. We don't need to solve that. So all we can do is write down the interval now. So the range of f is just the interval from the, everything that's greater than or equal to zero. So this is this interval now, okay? So what do you think? You can see a pattern there now with the domain and the range. In, in this example, we applied some of our top tips to a particular function, formed some inequalities, and then wrote down the interval of the domain and the range. Now you could graph this function. I'll, I'll talk about graphing in other videos, um, but at the moment we're just taking uh, an our sort of algebraic approach to, to, to finding these um, domain and range. Domain and range are uh, important because domain tells us what can I put into my function to make it work. And range is important because it tells us about the outputs. What kind of outputs would I expect from a, from a given function. Okay, everyone, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, any questions, put them in the comment section below, especially if you like the picture in picture. Um, join me again for the next video where we continue our um, odyssey into functions. See you later. Bye.